Hello, welcome to the Celebrate at Home weekend with Country Living. I'm Catherine G and I'm lucky enough to work at the magazine where we are also passionate about supporting artisans and small businesses who are facing challenging times at the moment because they don't have physical marketplaces. So we've created a virtual pop-up artisan market it's running just this weekend for 48 hours and they're offering amazing exclusive discounts. So do take time to pop to our Instagram page at CL Artisans where you can follow the link in the bio to get exclusive access to the sale. But in the meantime, let's talk chickens. If the recent problems with getting your hands on some eggs has inspired you to keep some chickens in the garden, then we've got the perfect person to tell you how to do it. Sarah Ward, who runs a company perfectly called Hen Corner, there's a clue in the title there, is a writer for Country Living and what she doesn't know about how to keep chickens you could write on the back of an egg. So I'm going to hand over to Sarah who's going to give you a romp through everything you need to consider before getting your own chickens. Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Hen Corner. We are so pleased to be part of Celebrate at Home with Country Living. And today we're going to be looking at our chickens and our bees that we keep here in our family home in West London. We'll be looking at the equipment needed, the space needed and the daily, weekly and seasonal care. So if you're interested in keeping some chickens for a few eggs or trying your hand at beekeeping to produce your own lovely honey, then stick with us and we'll explain how we can get started. This is Snowy, she's one of my favourite chickens. She's Salmon Favorel as a breed, and they are famous for their beards under their chins and also the fact that they have got five toes instead of the usual four. Now here at Hen Corner, we keep three types of chickens. We keep Bantams, which are small chickens, which we keep in this egg glue here. We keep pure breeds like Snowy, and we've got some really gorgeous pure breeds. We're gonna let them out in a moment. And we keep them in the egg glue at the end. And then in the middle, we keep our hybrid hens. And our hybrid hens are hens that have been specifically crossed two breeds together to make sure that you've got maximum egg production, minimum broodiness, which is when they decide they want to hatch chicks and they stop laying eggs, and generally much more hardy chickens. So between the three different chicken coops that we've got here, um, we've got enough chickens um, um, for lovely fun cuddles like Snowy here, but also for lots of eggs right throughout the year. We're here at the chicken coop and we love using egg glues made by our friends at Omelette. And the reason that we like these, hello again Snowy, the reason that we like these is that they are very easy to clean, they're fox resistant and they make the whole process so much more manageable. We've been keeping chickens for about 13 years and, and we've seen that actually these work fantastic. The reason um, that they're fox resistant is that um, they're made, the, the runs are made from a steel welded mesh and if the foxes go in front on, they can't get through. But the clever thing here is the fox resistant skirt. If the fox tries to dig down, they can't get in under and um, the foxes just don't twig that they have to step back and then dig a tunnel. So we've been really fortunate. We've had chickens here um, in this garden um, for for 12 years we've never had a fox get in to the coops ever and um, we used to keep chickens in in our previous garden as well so when you're looking after chickens it's really important that one we protect them and two we provide for them just as you would with any living thing and for chickens we're protecting them from foxes as i've explained we also need to protect them from extreme weather now with their lovely fluffy feathers um, they're like duvet coats so in the winter, it keeps them nice and warm. They're fine in the winter here in the UK. And the challenge is when the, the um, weather is wet. You know what a wet duvet is like. If you've ever been camping and your sleeping bags got wet. So we need to make sure that the runs are covered to keep them dry. The other thing that we need to protect them from weather-wise is too much sun. And these covers give them a nice bit of shade as well. So they've always got somewhere cool to sit when the weather starts to get really warm. So we're protecting them and we're providing for them. And providing for them is making sure that they've got somewhere um, safe to sleep, providing them somewhere quiet to lay their eggs and providing them with fresh water and a, a constant supply of food. We use layers pellets as their daily food 
and we give them a treat of corn. But I know that these girls want a bit of a run around. So we're going to have, let them do a bit of free ranging in the garden now. And then we'll go and see what's in the nest box. Are you ready, girls? Here we go. This is the other end of the chicken coop of the egg glue. And whilst there's space for the chickens to sleep and they roost on bars as though they would be roosting on branches of a tree, this area here is where the chickens lay their eggs. Now I say chickens and um, we only keep hens here at Hen Corner and hens are the female chickens. And um, so I'm hoping when we open this nest box, we're going to find some eggs. We've got a few chickens in there. There seems to be a bit of a queue to lay eggs, but I also know that we've got cheeky Nando's in here who's not laying eggs. She's sitting on some because she wants to hatch them. Well, let's take Nando's out. Oh my goodness, look what you were sitting on. So this is Nando's. She's one of our famous chickens here. And if you've ever been to the Country Living Spring Fair at Alexandra Palace, you'll have met Nando's. I must say at this stage, I didn't name her Nando. Somebody else called her that. But she is a Peking Bantam. Oh, you've just dropped, dropped out, have you? She's a Peking Bantam. And she's ever so sweet with her f um, furry, feathered, flared feet, just like she's come straight out of Abba. Oh! And at the moment, as I said, she is broody, which means that a week or so ago, she decided, that's it, I've laid enough eggs now I'm going to sit on them and hatch them. And even though I tell her, but you haven't got a boyfriend, there's no daddy chicken, there's no way your eggs are going to hatch, she doesn't believe me and she sits tight on those eggs. So that brings me to one of the daily responsibilities for keeping chickens, as well as making sure they've got food and water. We need to collect the eggs every day because if we don't collect the eggs, cheeky ones think it's time to lay, oh, sorry, cheeky ones think it's time to sit on them and hatch them. And no eggs are gonna hatch here. We've got no boy chickens, there's no cockerels, so all of our eggs are just for eating. We're here at the beehive and we're gonna do our weekly inspection to check to see that the bees are doing okay. Um, every week between the months of April to um, July, it's really important to check the hive each week to make sure that the queen is there and healthy, that they have enough food, that they have um, a healthy brood. So that's all different stages of um, the, the babies from egg through larva to adult um, bees. And we wanna just check that everything's fine. They're happy, they're not planning on swarming um, and they're making good honey for both themselves and for us to harvest later in the year. Now, we always use a smoker um, when we're working with the bees. And I'm just gonna get this lit and then explain why we use the smoker. So I've got it um, filled with some old egg boxes and just get them lit and then we can start puffing. Now the reason that we use the smoke with the hive is to calm the bees. Now it's not that they smell the smoke and think, oh, I feel really calm and laid back. It's the fact that they smell the, smell the smoke and think, oh flip, the, the hive's on fire. And, and just like we would if we smelt smoke in our own homes. So when the bees smell the smoke, they think, the hive is on fire, our home's on fire, we need to find a new home. Um, now then, what have we got that we need to take with us? We can't take our babies with us, we can't carry those, but we can take some food. And then the food will be like a packed lunch for the journey, but it also means that we're in a good place when we find a new home to start making more wax, to make more cells, for the queen to lay more eggs, and for us to store more honey. So what happens when the bees smell the smoke is they go down into the hive and they start feeding themselves, gorging themselves on honey, like packing a lunch, pack lunch for the journey of swarming to find a new home. And, um, and that process of eating lots of honey, they then 
flip over into that Sunday afternoon feeling of like, oh, I've just had a really big dinner and I'm so tired and I don't really want to go anywhere now. Um, and, but because the bees are so preoccupied with thinking that there's a fire and the smoke doesn't do them any harm, it means that we can inspect the bees and they're less likely to be interested in us because they're planning to, um, you know, they're to, to defend themselves by moving away from the fire. So have I lit this properly? Yes. Um, I'm gonna take the top of the hive and then we're gonna have a look inside. This colony that we're looking in today is a small colony and it's just recovering from a shook swarm where the bees are busy building up new wax to store honey for them to eat and um, for the queen to lay eggs in and for storing pollen to feed the baby larva. So give them a little smoke so that they know that we're coming and let's have a look at this frame. This tool here, this hive tool is really helpful in separating the frames that are starting to get stuck together with wax. Now then, oh this is brilliant, we can see the queen on here. Now the queen bee is here, this one here, can you see the green blob on her, sorry, on the top back of her thorax. We mark the queens so it's easy to spot them amongst all of her all of her children. When the hive is full over the summer months, we can have up to 60,000 bees here. So we want to make sure that um, we can spot the queen easily. The queen is looking for spaces, empty cells for her to lay eggs in. And what we can also see on this frame, if I can hold it without squashing any bees, see these cells here? So quite a lot of them have got eggs in that the queen has laid. These ones that are covered, this is where they've got the developing larva. And in some of the others, we can see early stages of the eggs hatching, the larvas developing just before they cocoon and come out as adult bees. This top corner here, where the cells are covered with a white capping, is where the bees are storing honey. Let's have a look at one of the other frames. When we're holding the frames, when we're holding the frames, um, it's really important that we recognize the weight of the, the frame um, can be quite heavy when the, the frame is full of honey as well as the bees. So we want to be careful in how we rotate the frames to see the other side. So if I want to see this side, obviously I'm already facing this side, then what I would do is I would, still holding the frames by the lugs, I would drop it, turn it, and then have it upside down, and we can see what's on the other side. Now on the other side of this frame, we've actually got a lot of developing larva. Under here, all of these yellow cappings underneath there are bees in the metamorphosis stage, in the cocoon stage, where they've gone through being eggs hatching, larvas developing, they're now growing their wings and they will come out as full adult bees ready to serve the colony. Okay, I'm going to put this frame back. Check the queen is still on there. Where's she gone? There she is. Pop that back in. And they're doing well, albeit a bit slowly, but I am very, very happy with the health and the well-being and um, looking forward to see this colony, looking forward to seeing this colony increase in size over the summer months. We've met the chickens and we've been to the hives and now we're going to talk about the fantastic eggs and the honey that we get from them. With the eggs you can see we've got all different colours and all different sizes and that's because we keep such a variety of chickens here at Hen Corner. And you can tell um, what colour egg a chicken is going to lay by looking at its earlobes. Because if their earlobes are white, they're going to lay a white egg. If their earlobes are a dark brown, they're going to, sorry, dark brown, dark red, they're going to lay a brown egg. If their earlobes are a paler pink colour, you're going to get a pale brown egg. 
But if their earlobes, whoa, if their earlobes are a pearlescent colour, sort of a bluey white, then that's where you get the bluey green eggs that we've got here. So that's why we're so delighted to have such a wide variety of chickens here at Hen Corner, because we get a wide variety of eggs as well. Now it's really important with eggs that you eat them in date order. So we use this egg skelter here, which means that as we put on the eggs that we collect, it's always the oldest egg that's at the front. So if we eat the oldest egg at the front, then we can know, we can know with confidence that we're eating them in date order. Um, oops, that's the cat, kitten trying to get hold of some of the chickens. Um, that if we eat the eggs in date order, we know that we're eating them when they're nice and fresh, um, but they're not too old either. Eggs can be stored at room temperature and they keep absolutely fine for two to three weeks. And if you're ever not sure whether your egg is fresh enough to eat or not, and um, try filling a pint glass with water and gently lowering your egg in and if your egg sinks to the bottom then you know it's absolutely fine it's fresh however if your egg floats it means that the egg's been sitting around for a while and the air pocket inside the egg has got bigger as um, moisture has evaporated through the eggshell and as the air pocket gets bigger over time allowing the egg to float you really shouldn't eat that egg it's really past its best so just finishing up talking about the chickens and the eggs, um, it's important with the chickens that we make sure they've got food, they've got water, they've got somewhere safe and secure to live. Um, we muck them out, there's a droppings tray that we pull out every week or so. Um, the droppings can get put into the compost, they make brilliant compost to go on the veg garden. And we make sure that when we go on holiday and um, that we have neighbours come in just to make sure there's food and water there, the eggs are collected and all is well. Now with regard to the bees, the beekeeping is a bit more seasonal and we've got some lovely honey here. Now we take the honey off at the end of the year. I said that we do weekly inspections and that's really important and over the course of the warmer months the bees will be storing enough honey in the hive for themselves to, to eat but they also store more than they need and it's that extra honey that they store that we are able to take for ourselves. Now this honey, this jar is actually quite old. This is from my very very first year keeping bees and the reason that I've kept this honey is because this batch of honey won best honey in London at the National Honey Show so we did hold back a few jars um, just to remember the occasion and to remember that it's a very special award-winning honey. Now honey does last indefinitely and honey um, has been found in the pyramids and it's still absolutely fine and safe to eat. So I would encourage you, if you're looking for some really good honey, particularly if you're looking for some relief from seasonal allergies and hay fever, do try and buy honey from a local beekeeper. We've got honey for sale here at Hen Corner, um, but near you, you will find a beekeeper. And if you want to find your local beekeeper, go to the British Beekeeping Association website, BBKA, I think it's .org? We'll put it up, <laughs> we'll let you know. So do find local honey from your local beekeeper because you will know that that has come from one hive, it's not been blended, it's not been imported and it will be really good for you. Once we've taken the honey off the hive um, in late summer, um, then we make sure the bees are ready for winter. We treat them um, for the varroa mite, which is a nasty little mite that impacts our honeybees. And we make sure they've got enough food for the winter months. We, we make sure that they've got um, some sugar in case um, they get a bit hungry or they can't find the honey that they've stored. And we look forward to the springtime when we can start our weekly inspections. So if you're thinking about getting some chickens or getting some bees, you can find out more by following our blog, hencorner.com. We're also running online virtual courses. We'd love you to join us. Again, more information is on the website. But to support all the other artisans, the country living artisans that would have been at the Spring Fair, we would encourage you to support them and buy from small businesses at this time. Country Living have set up a brand new Instagram account, CL Artisans, specifically to support the Country Living Artisans that would have been exhibi exhibiting at the Spring Fair. Please do follow that on Instagram, at C 
SCL Artisans. And you will find all kinds of special offers and artisan producers that are showcasing their produce at the moment. Small businesses are open at this time. Please support them. And once we're in better times and the restrictions have been lifted, we are looking forward to getting together at the Country Living Christmas Fair. We will be there at Hen Corner and we would love to see you. So as soon as we're able to, please do buy your tickets for the Christmas Fair because it will be great to be together again. That's me, Sarah at Hen Corner. It's been great to be together today and I look forward to seeing you soon.